Hello everyone. This is Amal Naruto. Welcome to my channel. So today in this video, I'll be talking about uh, the first category of the types of system that is uh, depending upon the amount of amount of supervision and also the type of the supervision. Okay. So depending upon the amount and type of supervision, it has been classified as four categories supervised unsupervised semi supervised the last one is reinforcement learning so these are all the uh, algorithm techniques, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, reinforcement learning, uh, reinforcement learning. So these are all the four categories uh, which has been categorized based on the amount and type of the supervision. Okay. So, so actually you get a data. Okay, during your training. So during the training period, the amount of supervision that you are going to do and the type of the supervision that you are going to do based on that, our algorithms has been classified into the four categories. So in that, now I want to explain the first category that is supervised learning. Just have a look now. So what is mean by a supervised learning? So what is meant by a supervised learning? So what do you, first of all, if you want this to be understand, uh, so just observe the name itself, supervise. What is that supervise? Supervise in the sense something uh, that you are actually going to monitor something and uh, you have a complete control of something. Supervision in the sense is, somewhat you have complete control, right? So if you don't supervise it, what happens? For example, uh, you have a pan and uh, this is your, this is your stove, okay? Here the stove is actually burning and uh, so this is the maybe uh, milk, just imagine, and you're going to supervise it. If you don't supervise it, do you have any control the the outcome that uh, that is need to be generated uh, in this process no why because if you don't supervise it you don't know uh, what to get and when to stop this stove and uh, what what should be the uh, result but if you are actually supervising it then you know at what time that you need to stop and uh, what is the final product that you need to get for example this is the coffee okay so this is our end result, okay? So what I'm trying to say is, <clears throat> in the supervised learning, we have a training data. Okay, the training data is actually provided to you. For what? For what reason the training data is actually provided? Training data is provided to feed our algorithm. Okay, this is our algorithm to feed the data to feed the data our training data is provided to us okay and after feeding it what happens it should definitely have desired outcomes okay for example you are feeding the data to the algorithm and you are saying to get something so this is your output so you are saying i'll be providing some x okay just imagine I'll be providing some X to my machine, okay? Imagine machine or robot or something. You're passing some kind of instruction and you're saying, uh, get something. I I want to have Y, okay? I'll, I'll provide X, then just get me Y. You're saying this thing. Then, obviously, <clears throat> it comes under supervised learning technique. Why? Because here you have a desired... Uh, training data that is the uh, input and 
here you are getting some kind of output in the sense some at least some kind of output that you have an idea about so you want you're saying i have uh, two rupees and just give me uh, one chocolate so here the chocolate is your required thing so you have a clear cut clarity here and uh, your the the shopkeeper is in the sense algorithm here okay just observe this training data in the sense money algorithm in the sense shopkeeper and after giving money it will the shopkeeper will give some chocolate chocolate is your end result in the sense that is the output or you can also call it as labels okay in the sense i'll make you understand uh in a more clear manner for example see uh for example see i have three columns <clears throat> serial number customer name amount and uh, chocolate so these are my four columns in the sense actually so these are my four columns okay for example we have two customers one and two the customer name is naruto and the other customer is itachi and amount amount in the sense the money that they have for example naruto has 5 rupees or 5 dollars imagine 5 dollars okay and itachi has maybe 7 dollars okay for 5 dollars he is getting a chocolate okay he is getting a chocolate uh maybe some cadbury kind of chocolate okay he's getting some kind of cadbury kind of chocolate and uh, for this 7 dollars and here it actually is getting some tok tok is a kind of uh, expensive chocolate it actually is actually getting and for naruto only cadbury kind of chocolate is actually he's getting okay so what i'm trying to say is i have a third person and uh, this is madara okay he's having he's having uh maybe Six point eight nine rupees, and uh, what is the chocolate that he'll get? So I want to predict this thing. Okay, so depend. These are the features, and uh, depending upon these features, you need to predict what is the chocolate that he is actually going to buy, or uh, what is the chocolate that he is actually uh, going. Uh, I mean, he can purchase with the amount that he has. So he can definitely purchase Cadbury uh, and he can also purchase stock. But what I'm trying to say is, uh, what is the maximum amount that he has to buy uh, his desired chocolate? Okay. For example, with this amount, 6.89, he can easily buy a talk chocolate. Okay. He can always buy Cadbury chocolate. So depending upon the amount, amount is a kind of feature here. Okay. Depending upon this feature, we are actually uh, predicting something in the sense our data has some kind of labels. 
so this is our label chocolate is nothing but an output variable or the dependent variable in the sense we our data has this entire data is nothing but our training data our training data has some kind of labels okay so this comes under supervised learning algorithm technique okay i'll also show you some other example with which you you will have a better clarity for example just take the example of uh, spam filter what is the job of this spam filter it usually classifies if any mail if any new mail comes uh, whether it belongs to the spam category or the ham category so it usually predicts it for example this is our data okay here we already in the training set we already have few kind of mails okay Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is uh, this particular mail here, this type of mail is nothing but here it's a label. Why? Because it is clearly written. Okay, it's well structured and uh, uh, it has some kind of uh, naming here. It Okay, so here I'm considering it as a label. This type is also a label. But the empty mails, in the sense, it doesn't have any email. Okay, it doesn't have any email. Uh, sorry, it doesn't have any label on it. So, here, in the output, what if any new mail comes? If any new mail comes, it will usually predict whether the new mail has been belonged to this, uh, I mean, this category. Okay, spam category, or ham category, okay, for better understanding, I'm drawing again, okay, here it is maybe spam, here it is maybe ham, okay. So, so likewise, our data has, our training data always has some kind of labels. Based on that labels, we usually predict any new instance comes. So this, this blank mail is nothing but it's a new instance. In the sense, it hasn't been categorized yet. So we need to categorize it with the help of this supervised learning technique. So this new instance should be categorized uh, as spam or either as uh, ham. So this is a perfect example for supervised learning approach. So this particular example that is to classify uh, any new instance to classify any new instance as spam or ham is nothing but a kind of technique with the name classification. Okay, so this is nothing but a classification. Whenever a new mail comes, whether it should belong to the spam category or it should belong to the ham category. So it, whenever it classifies in this kind of way, then that should be called as a classification. Okay. So how does it know that a new mail is usually belonging to a particular category? How does it know? This is usually done by having trained with many examples, emails, okay. So here you'll be having past data of the all the emails. So these, these are all the training data. So based on this training data, our spam filter usually does the job. I mean, it usually classifies, uh, it usually classifies a new mail based on this huge training data. Okay, so this comes under uh, classification. So that's all for this video and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you like the content. If you like it, just hit a big thumbs up.
I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Jai Hind.